go. Hey, y'all. So I'm here with uh, Christian Guerrero here, uh, All Season Ironworks. If you don't, if you hadn't seen his work, All Season Ironworks uh, on Instagram, you on other platforms, you on all platforms as well? Uh, yes, sir. I'm all over. Uh, all Facebook, over. Uh, YouTube, the whole nine. So, okay. so, awesome. so yeah, check him out, man. He does awesome work. If you're in the industry, uh, you want to pick up some things, man, this is the guy to go to. Uh, inspiration. Uh, it you you'll you'll be challenged by trying to keep up with him as far as where he's taking taking the game uh, another level. But uh, just um, just welcome, man. Thanks for thanks for checking us out. Uh, KBG Welding. We're just trying to. I, I like reaching out. You know, I appreciate you answering. You know what I mean. I reach out to different people. Um, just whoever. I mean, but again, I I want to see if somebody's doing something. And man, I want to try to emulate that. I want to go straight to the source. Um, so I reached out to you, tried to get some insight and you shared, you know, what you could. And I, I, I'm grateful for that. And I've been following you and, and I really like your work and like what you do up in New York. Um, I'm not familiar with that, with that uh, part of the world. So um, I can't really speak on that but it's uh gotta come visit man it's, yeah, it's gonna get yeah, cold I, soon you gotta come visit <laughs> i gotta get up there man i gotta get up there i want to get get to all parts come do come check out your shop i know you said one at one point uh it's not not a big big deal but hey you got something going man i just like i said the the process you got systems process those types of things when we talk about the industry those are things that i'm trying to establish you know because we're kind of we're having a lot of mistakes because we don't have some of those things implemented, you know? Absolutely. So, uh, so we're trying to tighten up and trying to go and again, trying to implement things. Um, but yeah. So tell us a little bit about all seasons, man. Uh, all seasons ironworks. We're in long Island, based in the New York area. Uh, we work in the metropolitan area. We specialize in three things, structural steel, ornamental and miscellaneous. Okay. Uh, we've worked as far as San Francisco, uh, All Seasons Ironworks is a baby company. It's only four years in the game. Started in December 2016. So we're going to approach four years. And it's it's a little bit of a Cinderella story of how we started. Um, hopefully we can touch base on that and how we did start because I think it's important. Maybe somebody out there who's actually watching this is going through the same steps. Um, so it's been it's been a hell of a ride. It's, it's fun. It's been passionate. It's a family-owned business. Uh, I post a lot of pictures with my father. Uh, I just actually got my sister in here. So now it really does feel like a family business. Good stuff. Yeah, yeah. I'm a big believer that no one's going to care as much as your family. So if you're going to yeah. feed someone and if you can, you have the ability to have sit down with your family and see if they can actually come in and, you know, you guys can see eye to eye. Good stuff. So you said the three, three foundation, what are the three, the three y'all specialize on? Feel is really how we started and what we specialize in. Okay. Even though All Seasons Ironworks is four years in the game, the name All Seasons Ironworks, but we've been doing this for many years. Okay. Um, ornamental is, is another one of our, our lines, uh, railings for interior, exterior. Uh, we actually just started to touch a little bit of ornamental on the commercial side too. Okay. So we're getting uh, contracts for that. Uh, and miscellaneous. Uh, miscellaneous is just random projects that you never say no to if you can. If you haven't done it before, it could open to new doors. Yeah. Um, miscellaneous, honestly, is, is a blessing. It's a little bit, it's a little random. You don't get them a lot. Um, we've been to San Francisco uh, due to a miscellaneous project. We had a marketing firm contact us. Yeah. Wow. So we traveled. I mean, growing, that to me was big. Growing up to me, uh, the furthest I ever drove was the Bronx for work. Yeah. So the fact that we had a project that the client was willing to pay us for flight and travel all the way on the West Coast, that was big. Uh, I feel like that was an eye opener. Yeah. Uh, especially for my father. You know, I think that that right there set the bar up. Um, we've done miscellaneous projects, uh, New York Stock Exchange we've been in, uh, Grand Central Station. So we have hit these, what I consider landmarks in New York that, you know, I don't think average Joe actually gets inside them. So I think it's a really cool thing. And yeah. it really just showcases that the name All Seasons Ironworks is slowly, because it's a process. It really is. Uh, yeah. Awesome. So, yeah. yeah, man, that's good stuff. Uh, San Francisco. Um, so what, what's your, what's the, what's the picture? I mean, I know family, is there a, do you have a, a big picture plan? Do you have, you know, what, what's yeah. your why behind it? I mean, the picture that I have in the vision is that your goal is always supposed to change. 
I mean, the way we started, again, it's a Cinderella story. We started in a small room. We didn't have a shop. It was 350 square feet. It was tiny. It's maybe the size of this room right now, if not smaller. Um, a laptop, loosely paper, a piece of paper, and that was it. So yeah. that is really how we started. So my vision is to continue to grow. Your client base is always supposed to grow. Um, yeah. My father used to own a company himself. He was just a steel erector. Yeah. Um, so I, I would actually like touch base a little bit of how we started. Uh, and then, you know, maybe discuss a little bit about the why. Okay. My father, my father's a bull man. Uh, yeah. I love that man. We have a very, very good respect, you know. Uh, he used to be a shoemaker, a shoemaker in Colombia. That's really? how we really started off. Yeah, we came here. Uh, I'm 32. I came here at the age of two. Uh, my father's first job was at Babylon Ironworks in Long Island. It's a really well-known shop over here. But my father didn't know anything about welding. You know, he would tell me tales of on break time, instead of going out to eat, he would turn on the welding machine and learn. Yeah. Uh, weekends, he would pick up the blueprints, take them home to study. You know, and he's always had that mentality. Mm -hmm. And I think it obviously, hopefully I could pick up on that. Oh, yeah. Um, but he really, he really picked it up. So that man has done it from, from that. He became the foreman of that shop and started his own gig, uh, which was JG General Welding. He was a steel erector just for the Long Island area. Um, it didn't really work out for him. I don't want to get too personal, but it just didn't really work out for him. Uh, at the time, at a young adult, my early 20s, I was working at an engineering firm. Okay. And so no one really knows what they want to do at the young age, you know? Oh, yeah. So I had an opportunity to kind of showcase and help my family. And that's what I did. And I think it was a really good decision that uh, we came together. But I mean, growing up as a kid, my father really, I remember going to barbecues and he would teach me how to use a magnetic drill the whole nine. So, I mean, I grew up on steel the whole, you know, summer times I'd work with him. Uh, he taught me how to read blueprints, crane signals, learn how to rig the whole nine. Wow. So, Really how we started, that was the foundation. It was always there. Mm -hmm. uh, the good thing that I kind of want people to pick up on this is that even if you fail, you could always kind of like step back up. Yeah. Um, and as long as you're willing to change, you know, my perspective was if it didn't really work out the way he did it, like, what can all Seasons Ironworks do different? Um, and I think that's important. A lot of people want to see their life change or their business change, their business model change. But if you're not willing to change your actual aspects, your views, how you come about your business, then you're going to have the same outcome. Mm -hmm. So my father in 10 years did maybe 10 railings. Uh, ornamental to me is big. It's a really big market. I live in the suburbs. So yeah. it's basically want and need. The way I saw it was, do people really want, for example, a security system in their home? Maybe. But people need railings. It's a liability issue for inside and outside. Yeah. So that's where my eyes kind of just... But we've passed already, I think, 200, 300. I stopped uh, losing count. So ornamental started off as if maybe we can do it mm -hmm. to the point that I would like to think that we're one of the leading fabricators for ornamental in the Long Island area. Okay. Um, when we first started, it was just research. You know, the way I see it, we live in the year of the Jetsons. Uh, you have Google, you have YouTube, and you can literally research. Do your own research. The way I started off was... Where do I live? I live in the suburbs to the point that I could contact residential homes. Uh -huh. If I lived in Florida, I would maybe try to contact people in the boating industry or some type of welding repairs for docks. Yeah. Texas, maybe mechanical, you know, bulldozers, stuff like that. So me, what I did was I live in Long Island, uh, which is basically suburbs. So we got really heavy into ornamental and it was a growing process. Like I know you were talking about before the sketches and, and everything. Yes. When I first started, man, it was hand drawn. It was yeah. hand. I can't. I failed art in high school, you know. Like I was <laughs> hand drawn, and I'll never forget that one time I did something for a client. It took me like two hours to the point that you're wiping the paper and it came out nice. I went to the client's home. They weren't there. I gave my sketch and never called me back. And then it hit me. I'm like, oh, well, I don't have a showroom to showcase people. When people call you. They want to see a showroom. Yeah. I'm still doing the game. I don't have it. One day I'll, I'll have one. I don't have one. Um, so I got, I had to pick up on something and I had to learn how to draw. And so that's what I do. So my big thing that I think All Seasons is all about is that, you know, we can actually create you a mock-up, a 3D sketch. Yeah. Um, and we did this for ornamental. And then now I just kind of do it for everything. The yeah. shop guys, when I do like little mini details and people like it. I think visuals really do close the deal. Um, but it was something I was self-taught. Mm -hmm. uh, I honestly use 3D paint 
for, the, for most of my stuff. There's nothing really famous or, or, or famous program that I use. Um, and I'm still learning to grow. I posted up a video maybe last week where I put the 3D model on the table. It was like a hologram. Uh -huh. uh, and so that's the whole point. You always have to try to progress. You know, if I have something good now, what can I do better? Um, and that's, we do that every time. I mean, the way I see it, the way the rule here in the office is that there's four seasons in a year. We should have meetings every four seasons. What can we change? Yeah. Um, for example, like the models on your, or on your ornamental. Always try to upgrade them. You know, what's, what's new, what's modern. If you haven't done it, it's fine. I mean, you got to be willing to take that risk and always increase your catalog, I would, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, always the goal is in a yearly basis is to increase your client list. Um, residential, unfortunately, the truth is you do one railing, they may call you back, they may spread their word, but really yeah. when I say client list, it's commercial. Commercial, yeah. Um, commercial, if you do a good job, they will call you back. You know, that one client, that one project learned into five years of a business relationship. And if you get one client every year, fast forward five, 10, 15 years, you're going to have constant work. That right there is my main vision gotcha. uh, to continue to grow to the point that we can't walk in this facility. This facility is only 2000 square feet. Okay. I think that we're doing pretty good this year. Like, like all of us, not even just Americans, but the whole world coronavirus hit us. Yeah. So uh, ornamental was a blessing because we got so good at it that ornamental is what kept us alive yeah. uh, throughout, throughout uh, the coronavirus. Um, this year was a year of reflection, you know, because we had a lot of time free. I think that April, May around there was, was a hard time in New York. Yeah. Um, we had to let go of a lot of, unfortunately, we had to let go of a lot of people, you yeah. know. Uh, my right hand, who was my office, she was let go. You know, she started with me when I was in that little tiny room that I was discussing before. Yeah. Um, but we took time to kind of reflect, what can we do better? Um, there's a little few things that I, I picked up on and I changed. And I think that now we're starting to see it. We're starting to see that our ornamental, even though we're still in coronavirus, it's still much alive where it's actually increased. Uh, yeah. In New York, the colder it gets, the slower the work kind of gets. Yeah. But, you know, luckily this it looks like we're going to end the year on a good note, you know? Yeah. So, my way is that 2021, you always want to come with, with new tricks, new ways to, to kind of have that mentality, but don't just wait till January 1st. Yeah. Implement those goals now so you can tweak them as you go. Yeah. Um, and always set goals to the point that if you reach them, then you always, you should always have new goals and, you know, to continue to grow, to push yourself in the whole night. Um, so coronavirus, even though it hit us hard, it was a blessing because we changed a lot. And, you know, so far, I think I, we're still we're doing pretty good. Yes. Yeah, good stuff, man. Hey, um, so, yeah, that's pivot, pivoting, man. That's, that's key. And, you know, with, your, with the ads and, and, man, getting out there knocking on doors, man. That was, that's, that right there, you know, it's, it's hey, you, gotta, you just gotta, gotta do it. I know you said you took a, took a I kind of followed you during that time. And, I see you took that step. It took you a little bit, a few days or whatever. And then you're like, okay, well, Hey, we still got to get it. You know, I mean, it's not going to come to you. You got to plant the seeds. Um, Absolutely. So that's, the, and, and that's, that's awesome. You know, I actually, I, I got flyers. I, I put out flyers because of that, you know, I went and did some flyers and, and got out there and did the same thing. So uh, it's awesome. So I, I man, just keep, I, I'm not proud of you, man. Just keep, keep pushing, keep Appreciate grinding. It, Thank you. Uh, tell your pops, man. Hey, there's no, I think I recently heard master P say, uh, there's no losses, just lessons. There's no, Absolutely. Losses, just lessons. So and, and I'm a big believer in that. Honestly. I mean, I, you have to understand failure. A lot of people do two things. They fail and people don't like to feel uncomfortable. Mm -hmm. Once they fail, they say, no, 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 that's not for me. What you have to understand is that if you fail, you have to take a perspective of what did I learn from it? What can I do better? Yeah. So there's many, many jobs when I do, ha I have opportunities and I butchered it, you know, flat out, I butchered, damn, I should have done this. I've had meetings in the city where it's like, oh, well, I wish I would have done this or I would have said this. Yeah. And it's always a learning curve. So failure is important because you have to learn from it. Yeah. You know, um, again, I'm going back to the ornamental because it's brand new for us, you know? Yeah. And, and we're doing pretty good. But when we first started, it was not the quality of work that we have now. 
you know, I didn't, four years ago, I didn't know anything about powder coated. You know, I think our first railing that we actually uh, fabricated in our first shop was actually outside. So when it snowed or rained, we couldn't even work. Yeah. Um, but the first one we actually uh, fabricated, we didn't, my father and I argued because we didn't know if we should put primer on it. You know, and he was just, he, he, was, he told me, he's like, nah, 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 Rustolium is good. You know, and next thing I know, things just completely rusted. Yeah. You know, so, and it's a joke. People, some people be like, what are these guys? You know, but I didn't know, you know, and you have to be, you have to be man enough to say, or an individual enough to say that, hey, listen, I'm willing to learn, bro. You know, yes. and, and you're the Jetsons, man. Even if you're ashamed to ask a question, you have the power of Google. Yeah. You know, I'm 32. And I think what people don't understand is, that years are changing, you know? When I wanted to download a song at the age of like 12, it was Napster. I had to take my mother's phone line and it took me one hour to download one song. I don't even know if it was a good song, you know? Like this is <laughs> before YouTube. Yeah. And it's the, it's the truth, you know? Yeah. Nowadays, you literally, you can learn anything. Yeah. You really can. Anything on YouTube, if you really want it, it's just lack, you know, you have to have hustle, motivation, and just really sit down and do your research. Yeah. A lot of people just think that things are going to come in their hands and it doesn't work like that. You have to have to kind of set yourself apart. Yeah. Kind of just be like, hey, do I want to be average or want to do something great? If you want to do something great, you got to be willing to change and give 110% of everything you do, you know? Yeah. For real. Good stuff, man. Good stuff. So, um, so, you know, I was actually going to – that's one thing that I usually do when we're talking about goals, going back to the goal thing – one thing that I usually do during the year, it's uh, the big thing down here for me, I grew up in Austin. So Longhorns, uh, Texas state fair, OU Texas game every October. Yeah. I always want to go. I always want to make that trip, but I always fail to plan ahead of time. Then it sneaks up on me and I'm like, Oh, it's this weekend. Uh, I'm not going. <laughs> Cause you know what I mean? I'm behind. So so goals, similar, similar thing. We tend to, tend to like New Year's, obviously that's the big goal setting time. So we let it sneak up on us. Then we're like, oh, we want to start this goal. But uh, yeah, you know what I mean? So we don't do all the preparation, you know, start, get, get ahead of the game. So, but anyway, so that's kind of, I was, I was going to share something. Uh, actually, one of my next videos was going to be talking about, you know, hey, it's, we're, we're, we're there. We're, we're at the end of the year. You want to, those New Year's resolutions, you want those new goals, man, now's the time to start putting it down. Absolutely. You know, Absolutely. So, I mean, and, like and, to and you know what it is? It, it also becomes addicting. Yeah. You know, the, the human mind, we're all addicted to something. Yeah. Uh, uh, alcohol, uh, sex, if you will, anything. I'm addicted to success, you know, because once you knock something down, it's like, holy shit, I could actually do this. Yeah. You know? And so the point that it becomes addicting, I think that's, once you do it and you see your own accomplishments as well as your failures, it becomes addicting. You know, that's why you're supposed to be the first one in here. You're supposed to be the last one out. You're supposed to put in those hours after work. You're supposed to be reading those emails on your cell phone. You're supposed to be on the Saturday phone calls and trying to get hustled and, and, and everyone focused for next week because it does become addicting to the point that you push yourself, you know? So yeah, set goals, but you have to understand it's going to drag at first, but once you start knocking them down, it's a ride, man. And you really get compassionate. And what happens is that people start to see that. So like the residential, the human mind, for example, they love passion. They know what a genuine character is, you know, and they can see passion, work ethic. You know, I go to the gym, for example, I'm not in shape like these guys, but I go to the gym and it's just like, hey, what's up, what's up? And it's just because people love work ethic. Who doesn't like somebody who works hard and is passionate? And if you could showcase that in your business model, it becomes addicting. And then what it is, it's a domino effect. Your office is going to start doing it. Your, your peers, you know? And, and that's what I mean. I set goals, absolutely. Put 110% every day. And I'm telling you, man, you're not going to stop. Gotcha. Good stuff. So on going to the powder coat and paint, um, so what type of y'all do powder coat in-house? No, no, sir. No, no. Okay. so we have vendors. I'll, I'll we have vendors. Okay. Yeah. Cool. cool. So we offer uh, rust -Oleum. We have a few paint selections. Yeah. Gotcha. And what I also made this was easily accessible on the website if anybody wants to actually take a look at it. It's accessible to, to my customers, my clients, as well as anybody who wants to take a look at it. We have rust -Oleum, which is level one paint for me, and it's already included. 
Level two is Rust-Oleum Advanced, which is, for example, the client who wants that chrome color, that bronze color, something that does not come in a gallon of paint, something that yep. you have to buy that's advanced to me. Took us a while, but we had to download every individual picture. So that way, a client who wants something, a specific color, this is advanced, ma'am. It's actually on the website. It's on a slideshow. She can actually, or he could pick out whatever they want. Um, I'm a big believer in making things easily accessible to, yeah. to everybody. Awesome. Uh, number three is Benjamin Moore. Uh, Benjamin Moore, we push for interior. When we go to homes and they want to match, for example, a painting, their carpet, a mold or something like that. Uh, Benjamin Moore has close to 2,000 colors to choose from. It's called DTM, direct to metal paint. Yeah. So that's something that we also got into. Uh, we got really heavy into powder coating. Powder coating is something, took us a while to find a vendor out here um, but we metalize and powder coat railings. And then just recently we got into galvanizing. So, because what you need to understand is that powder coating is great, but it only touches the railing on the outside. Whereas galvanizing actually goes inside the tube, goes inside everywhere. Yeah. So you may want to consider for the, what we push for, um, you know, if you live near the coastal area, you may want to galvanize and powder coat, have the highest quality finish you can, and it's going to double the protection. Yeah. So what I do is I give clients options. You know, some of them are already included, like Rustoleum. But if you want something that it's going to last you for decades, maintenance free, and if you're willing to pay for that upgrade, we're willing to to give you that service. So that's something that we had. It was a learning curve, but now I believe that we have everything down packed to the point that if you want a product that's maintenance free, you can have it. Gotcha. You know? Gotcha. So the Rustoleum. So that's a standard, just that's everything that you do is going to at least have it. rust -oleum. is that what you're? Correct. rust -oleum to me is level one. It's yeah. the most basic. Yeah. Um, when you come to railings outside, the most popular color, for example, gloss black, semi-gloss, or matte. That's like our most popular color. Yeah. Same if here. you're looking for somebody who wants like a bronze or brown, well, listen, listen, you're going to have to either do advanced rust -oleum or pay for powder coating. Gotcha. Um, when we do powder coating, we use a special website or a special vendor, I should say, that we could actually give clients uh, samples. Wow. So the client selects five, for example, five different shades of brown. Um, at the end of the day, you also don't want to pay for powder coating and the client say, wait a second, wait, that's not the color I chose. That doesn't look like what I want. Oh, yeah. So we made it to the point that we can give clients samples. They literally, pick, and it's samples like this. I think I have one over here. Here, hold on. This is what we present to clients for when they do. Yeah. I don't know if you can see, but these all kind of look like the same color, uh -huh. you know, but they're, but they're not, you know, so the point that the client actually wants something and they actually tell me the model number and that's what they get. They keep that to the point that when we give them the product, they literally can put the sample next to it. And that's exactly what they get. Because um, we had to learn from that, you know, you want to yeah. make sure that, that the client is satisfied. I think that's the most important thing. Awesome. So that's how we do the powder coating. Good stuff. Good stuff. Yeah. Yeah. We actually, what's your turnaround? What's the up there? What's the turnover for, for powder coat? Well, since we use a vendor, um, I, my big speech is this, listen, I can't talk about, about a vendor. You know, I can only talk about all seasons, all seasons, ironwork staff. When we do powder coating, we do always what's called the dry install. Uh, the last thing you want to do is create a product yeah, yeah. and it not fit. You know, that's the worst thing that can happen. And, and, and we do dry installs, not just for powder coating, but when we galvanize, when we powder coat, and when we have weird layouts to the point that they have to get bolted on, always do a dry install. You know, it makes you look more professional. Who doesn't want to install something and everything fits snug and perfect? Yeah. The worst thing that you can do, and again, this is learned from experience. We've had issues in the beginning in our past where we would install, holy shit, this is not fit. And then we whip out the welding machine and we're fabricating on site and it just kind of makes you not look good. You know, so what we do is that we do steps, um, but our turnaround time depends on, on the linear feet, on the layout. And then I can't really speak on the, yeah. on the powder okay. coating. I'll take that. Another thing that I always do is I give a, a gap. I know that, for example, outside structures are done quicker than inside structures. I, I believe so. Yeah. Um, and then I always give myself a window. I know, for example, for an outside structure, I may say four to six weeks. Um, and my, my speech to clients is, hey, listen, I had four to six weeks, but I'd rather impress you by finishing earlier. You know, wh who doesn't want a railing in three weeks, but you told me four weeks, you know, it makes you look good, you know? So always give yourself a window and a cushion to the point that you're not rushing uh, the job. 
Um, and I think that's important. So it depends on regards to like the, the dry install and everything, the powder coating. So, and also the near feet. Awesome. Awesome. So like I said, we kind of, we cater in the, the point of the, of our videos, we have different uh, audiences. We have the, um, the person that's kind of in our seats that, that are, you know, whether they're in the industry, have a business going, or whether their their interest is in doing this, um, then we also target the the kid that's in school uh, that yeah. wants, wants to do welding, and then uh, I like to I like to bring and and talk to the consumer as well, educate help educate the consumer on hey when that ticket comes there's a lot that goes into that it's not just we're not just throwing a number out there for for that and it comes in you know their sticker shop there's there's a, a reason for it because there's so much that goes into it so that's kind of the because again we i run into that into that a lot i'm sure you've run into it over the over the years that hey uh you know because we kind of our trade we don't at least here we don't have it's not like electric electricians plumbers where across the board they kind of have a, a rate that's kind of similar you know they kind of yeah. have a, a board here in, in the steel and, and welding industry man you can you can bid on a job and i'll i'll try to get hey if i if i don't get the job i'll ask hey what what how do where do we where, where 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 were we at on it yeah. so we can better you know if we need to make adjustments but a lot of times it's just somebody came in and they were just so much lower and that and that's the mentality that that project had but there were some people that were still above us so it's just you know all over the board as far as that it makes you question were they was it apples to oranges or was you know what did everything line up or did you know was it you know did they come and maybe they'll call us back because we didn't everything didn't line up right but i, I like to get that information but i get a lot hey trying to get talked down on pricing you know now we have our standard and we have our our pricing and we think it, our pricing is is fair competitive but also we provide a, a service that hey it's deserving of what, where we're at so um but again and i know everybody you, you run into people that like to try to talk down haggle or whatever you want to call it but i just feel like like our industry like a mechanic you don't go into mechanic. I'm sure they don't get talk, try to talk down when their transmission needs to be changed or whatever, you know, as much as, as us. So, uh, so that's why I try to, like I said, just bring it to the, to the um, consumer, to the customer that's out there. Hey, this is what you're getting. These are why our prices are what they are. And this is what, what all goes into it. Consider all these factors, not just the, the end result, yeah. not just the price on it. it it's, it's a different ball game. I mean, uh, residential compared to commercial is a different ball game. Residential, when I do prices on that, it's based on, and I tell this to the office, design, linear feet, paint, and layout. That's residential. Commercial, now we're talking about structural steel. When you have blueprints in your hand and so forth, um, that's a different ball game. That's that's complete. That's you're talking about workers comp. You you could be talking about a crane. You general liability. You know it's it's a different ball game in regards to estimating. Um, and and to be honest, I'm still learning as I go because exactly what you said has happened to me to the point that people tell me, hey, no, 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 your price is just way too high. I'm on with someone lower, and that's fine. You know, and you should ask questions of, hey, listen, well, where did we fall under? And you should because you want to make sure that you're good. And I feel like it took me a while. I'm still learning in regards to pricing. What is that stable number to the point that you're making a profit, you're not taking a loss, and you're kind of gaining the experience and the opportunity to gain a new client? Um, what you need to understand also is, is when, you learn, when you're starting off, you can't give the highest number. You know, you, you, just, you just can't. Um, I'm a big believer in creating relationships, creating relationships and that way you can continue to have a customer. Yeah. Does that mean lowballing your first project? Then maybe. But you have to let that client know that, hey, listen, I'm willing to work with you because, listen, I, I'm, I believe in this opportunity. I'm, I'm, I know that if I showcase myself, that you're going to be a returning customer. Um, also, never give somebody exactly what they want. You got to meet in the middle. You know, always decrease your price, but don't give exactly what they want. Hey, listen, I'll meet you in the middle. I can't give you more, what you want, but I will decrease. Yeah. So always, always, there's and there's ways around it. Um, 
you know, I do, for example, discounts even my commercial. If you agree today, well, well mine is so-and-so off, you know. Um, if you pay by certain net days, I'll discount this and this, you know. So there's ways around, there's marketing, uh, uh, you know, things that you can do to gain. What I'm also a big believer in, though, is I do what's called intro emails. Um, it's again, it's 2020. You're the Jetsons. Yeah. Everybody from now on really should have a website. If oh, yeah. you don't have a website, I'm sorry, but maybe, you know, I think you should, you know, yeah, yeah. so what I do is intro emails and I have a template set up and I will literally, I'm just going to take out the calendar, uh, the calculator. So I literally email, I would try to, and I, I've been a little lazy with it lately, mm -hmm. try to do it to the point that I create a template and it's copy and paste. And what my template is, it basically describes what All Seasons is and is all about. I do structural steel, I do ornamental, and I have literally like a bullet point of what we can do, and I have pictures. Attached to that is actually my website. Who I send this out to is a bunch of GCs, yeah, different companies. And if you do the math, if let's just say, and it's a point that's copy and paste, 20 emails, maybe 20 minutes of your time, do it in the morning, maybe do 10 in the morning, then uh, 10 in the afternoon. Mm -hmm. But if you do 20, 20 times five, that's 100. 100 times four, you're sending out 400 emails, different emails a month times 12. That's 4,800 emails you just sent out by working 20 minutes a day, sending, introducing your company. Because what you need to understand is handing out the business card is great, but really showcasing the emails and this and that, having visuals, even in, even in a commercial, you know, out of 4,800 emails, let's say you maybe quote 1,000. You know, the more you quote, the more opportunity you have yeah. to gain that, that yeah. customer. Yeah. So that's the office is crucial for that. And you have to be willing to spit out the emails, to introduce yourself. You know, some people and, I've, and it's happened to me where people is, holy shit, I've actually I was looking for a structural seal erector. Yeah. And we've gotten opportunities. But if you don't try or if you're just waiting for the door to open or mm -hmm. the phone to ring. Yeah. You're not going to get work, bro. You have to really kind of go out and get it. And yes, handing out flyers for residential is, is crucial, but also emailing GCs. Yeah. If you want that structural steel oh, yeah. work, you know, you have to be willing to do it. You have to be able to, to bid a lot to yeah. the point that you have work next week, next month, and so forth. And then by bidding so much, what happens is that you learn. You learn about your prices, what's good, what's okay. bad, and you tweak it. The more experience and the more hands-on you get to actually estimate, the better you'll become at it. Yes. You know? Yeah. Good stuff, man. Well, man, that's that's awesome, awesome info. We might have to charge for this, um, <laughs> but no, I appreciate it, man. Uh, so we got so what's New Year? We got the New Year coming up. So I guess uh, just give us a, a part. I want to keep you. I got I got to hit the road myself, but uh, I want to get back with you. I want to uh, get back yeah, with absolutely. you. Uh, talk again. I'm gonna get up there. Um, we'll, we'll set that up. You come down here. Um, you see a franchise, you see franchising all season ironworks, see any of that? And uh, thought I thought about that. that? The next thing, I don't know about franchising, but I do, I think that there's another line that I'm, that I'm slowly uh, creeping into. I was actually at my sister's back here. Um, we're getting into residential lot. So all seasons ironworks is getting into residential homes a lot to the point that we're building rapports with clients. Yeah. So the thing that I wanted that I see all seasons at the next step is not only gaining new clients for commercial and growing as a company, mm -hmm. but creating a new line to the point that I want to start selling uh, merchandise. Mm -hmm. People love industrial furniture. So what if I can not only give you a residential railing, but Hey, listen, I now have a catalog of things that I can sell for your home as well. Yes. Um, it could be a small market and this and that, but you never know, you know, no. what's to say we can't rent a storefront, have not only the merchandise that you want to have, split that in half, and then you also have your showroom for your railings. Yeah. I think that that's the next step that we're going to take. Right now, I don't have time to build furniture. I just have ideas, yeah. you know, but we're in New York, man. New York, I don't have any millions of people in New York. I really don't. But New York City, they eat that up in regards to, to industrial furniture. You can do things with steel barrels and cushions. I saw that are beautiful. We powder coat them. So there's ideas that we have always want to expand and you never want to get too comfortable because then you're not going to grow. Yeah. So the next step, maybe franchise in the long run, but I think that the next step is to move out this building, uh, get into a bigger location as we continue to grow. And if we have enough time and enough personnel, let's start playing with, with furniture. Yeah. Let's start doing that to the point that we can give a client a catalog and you expand your company. You do structural steel, you do ornamental, you do miscellaneous. And hey, now we sell furniture, man. 
Yeah. You know? So yeah. always have a vision and a goal to where you can. So that's, I think that's the next step. Yeah. Good stuff. Yeah. That's, you know, a guy, uh, I don't know if you've seen any of our videos, but one of the first guys that I interviewed, uh, Black Phoenix out of, he's in Oklahoma now. Yeah. Uh, a hog on welding. Yeah, I saw that one. Okay, awesome. So products products over talent. So he's got a he's got a uh, operation going. He's a he's a he's a force. Man, his his energy is just unbelievable. Yeah. But um but he does a lot of products. He does a lot of design, a lot of stuff. And that's, that's what cool, yeah. and that's what I've been kind of leaning to, you know, because when you do when you have personnel uh because we have to be in, I mean, it's like in the industry, again, starting off, you have to make that, that decision. What do you want to do? Are you, cause I, yeah, I learned welding and I, I can weld and, but you, you got to run the business. You got to work, yeah. you got to work you know on is? the business. You have to have, you have to have a fundamental of, yes, what am I going to do? What am I, what are my services? But you have to have an open mind that as you continue, what else can I do? You know what I mean? Yeah. What else is there out there? Because when we first started off, like I said before, man, I didn't do railings. Railings were not my, yeah. my, my yeah. mentality. We were, I was a steel erector. That was it. Yeah. You know, now we do a little bit of everything. So you have to be a sponge to the point that there's nothing wrong with looking at what other people do and tweaking it your own way. Yeah. You know, yeah. always learn from other people, but always have an open book to the point that there's more out there. Everybody yeah. can eat. No, no. You know? and, and what I'm speaking more on was the working on the business like your oh, yeah. emails like that part because that's a that's you know micromanaging it and that's a that's that's something that takes a lot and especially because again the the guy that that wants to go into welding and they want to start they want to do their own thing which i was at one point i was like man i want to I, I, I just want to do my own thing but once you get into that own thing and you realize how much you're lacking because you you barely got through the welding part you didn't take any business courses. You didn't take any management courses. So now you, you're throwing, you're doubling up on what's new to you, you know? So they say that any business model, it's 80% psychological, 20% mechanics. Yeah. And that, and you know, yeah. I mean, I think that psychologically micromanaging, knowing the emails, knowing how to estimate, learning how to, how to, payroll hiring people who to hire yeah, yeah. a lot goes on into a business that no one sees people just see a product and that's it they don't see the behind the stage uh and you, it all starts with the office the first thing that i started off was the office build a strong office a strong communication mm -hmm. and yet yeah, you kind of learn as you go but you, definitely it is all psychological 80 percent, 20 percent is the mechanics that's what they say and I, I don't think believer in that okay. um being organized i think is the most ideal thing man it's the point that if somebody calls me i got the file right there my sister's here i ask her for an invoice she should know exactly what i'm talking about who i'm talking about and the amount owed and so forth so it does take a toll on you but if you're organized um and if you micromanage and you plan your day before mm -hmm. it'll be unstoppable bro gotcha gotcha man appreciate it big dog uh um your all your give us your all your contacts Social media. Uh, oh, how do how do we market? Yeah, no, just I'm just saying run through your what is Instagram, your accounts. How do we what do we need to look for? Oh, uh, my Instagram is all seasons ironworks. Uh, a lot a lot of underscores. Okay. Honestly, I tell everybody just Google all seasons ironworks, we pop up everywhere. Regardless okay. of Facebook and the whole nine. Okay. Marketing is very crucial and important. So yeah, all seasons ironworks. If you want, you know, follow us on Instagram. We, we try to post on a daily uh, basis to showcase what it is what we do. And to give clients, you know, informed as well as, as the public, you know. Awesome, awesome. So yeah, we'll we'll put the we'll put your contacts in the. Um, I appreciate it brother. as well, man. Thanks for hanging out with us again. We'll we'll be in touch and. Thank you. Sir. Uh, thanks for uh, y'all. Subscribe, like, share, do all that. Get to all season Ironworks, um, YouTube, all that. I know he's got some. I haven't been on that the YouTube yet, but I'm gonna get on there and subscribe after this. Uh, but check it out. Man, just support, follow. Um, you'll you, be sir. challenged. You'll be challenged. So uh, thanks for checking that out.